Now I know what you're thinking, okay? You've clicked on this video, you're expecting to just be fed some more clickbait nonsense that isn't actually gonna help you. And I promise you that this video is gonna be different. So this video is gonna be split into five sections where I talk about what I think the most important things are for climbing solo queue and the methods that I personally use in order to win these games. So if you give me maybe 20 minutes of your time, I'm gonna save months on your climb as long as you just listen to the things I'm saying in this video. So that will all be timestamped below if you do wanna skip that around. Before I start this off, I will say, cause I know I'm gonna get questions about it, that this was all in high elo so 75% win right here you can see that I played you know this account has been very high elo for a very long time also if you scroll to the bottom to where I began this climb you can see that I was already in master tier from these beginning games when I was an unranked and you know I was versing good players like this is a game here against coach Curtis so I better not see any comments about how I climbed this account out of bronze because that is just not the case one more thing real quick before we get started is that if you do want to watch these games if you go to my channel and you go to playlists and you find the road to rank one you will find most of these games have been uploaded or will be uploaded soon they're complete with my commentary and my explanation for why i'm doing things so that can be really valuable if you want to learn from as well so our first section is the pregame and it's important not to overthink the pregame too much because it's probably the least important section on this list but at the same time you can invest just a little bit of time into the pregame and get a lot of reward out of it so there's only a few things that matter in the pregame or at least i think matter but the first thing is going to be having a good blind pick i think having a good blind pick is absolutely crucial so examples of good blind picks are champs that normally do well in most lanes kind of function in most comps and ideally have a bit of mobility or safety to them that way you can just play out sort of any situation so examples for mid lane would be champs like Lissandra or Oriana at the moment um, if you're looking at other roles things like Renekton top um, Kaiser AD carry like these are champs that have mobility they're fairly standard they work in most cases they're fine in most lanes this is just overall it's really nice to have one of these champs in your champion pool because just it makes sure that if you're blind picking this champ you're never going to end up in a super super bad matchup and I think that goes a long way to being able to carry out or being able to win any early game and that's going to be very very important you're going to see all throughout this video that I prioritize early game very very highly on the note of early game importance, I think when you pick your champ, you should prioritize your matchup above pretty much anything else. So normally I prioritize picking for matchup over comp or anything else like that. Obviously, like within reason, like if you can't play a champ, if you're not comfortable on it, probably don't first time it in ranked, but it's so, so important at the moment that you have a good early game in League of Legends. So I pretty much just focus on making sure I have the best matchup possible before I start to factor in things like team comp or, you know, jungle support and stuff like that. One final note on champion pool is to get as specific as you can about when you're picking your champs. So obviously if you have a small champion pool of like two to four, this is probably going to be pretty easy. Like you probably have your blind pick champ and then you have a couple counter pick champs. If you're going to play a lot of champs, the again, the more specific you can get about that situation you're picking them in, the better. So if I give you some examples here, you know, again, remember I had Oriana and Lissandra as kind of my blind picks. Then I had, you know, Syndra as basically my anti-mage counter pick when I didn't need mobility. And then I had LeBlanc as kind of my, my champ that I went to when I had a ganking jungle and a ganking support and I needed mobility. Jace was my go-to AD blind. You know, I had um, Pantheon with an AP jungler versus a melee mid or something like that. The more specific you can get and the more consistent you can get with recreating the same situation is going to make you better and better at it. And so when you come into that matchup that you've, you know, you're picking for all the time, you're going to be so much more experienced and so much better at it than your opponent. It's just going to lead to a much higher win rate overall. Similar to how you're picking champs to prioritize matchup, you should also prioritize runes that are going to affect your matchup the most. Something we're going to talk about a lot in the next section is the value of a better first base and if by having early game runes for example scorch over gathering storm or fleet over conqueror you know area over phase rush whatever it is if that's the difference between having a better first base and not you should absolutely take it i think it's very easy to fall into the trap of just taking full scaling runes and admittedly full scaling runes are great if you get away with them and don't get punished but at the same time you lose a lot of agency over the early game and the early game is too important so obviously there are some matchups where the scaling runes will be better because you can't do anything in lane or there's just you know it doesn't really make a difference either way maybe you win without it but i would say in general early game runes so like resolve stuff like second win can be very good for melee champs um scorch obviously is good in a lot of matchups stuff like taste of blood gets a lot of value some of the time or if you are one of those champs that is choosing like a kali for example between fleet and conk a lot of the time i would recommend taking stuff like fleet so it, it can be kind of hard because it is matchup dependent but i would just say in general the early game runes are, are very very important 
Our second section is the pre-first base. So this is the first five or six minutes of the game before you get that first recall in. And it's extremely important, probably the most important time of the game. There are three things you need to get right at this stage. So you need to make sure that you don't die to any jungle ganks. You need to know what you want to do with your first three waves. And if possible, you want to get a better first base than your opponents. That generally means basing with more gold. So our first one, you know, how do we not die to jungle ganks? The easiest way to do this is just try to remember to place a ward somewhere around 220 to 240 in the river and just hug towards it. Obviously the timings can be different and you can get a little bit fancier if you want to place it in more effective positions but the most important thing is just get a ward down and make sure you're playing on that side of the lane. If you're bot lane or top lane again it's just getting that ward down before you're gankable. As long as you rotate your trinkets so place one at like 230 and another one at four minutes you should be completely ungankable early game as long as you notice the jungler quick enough. The next thing then is what to do with our first three waves. So if you're in a winning matchup or in an even matchup generally you're going to want to push slow push if possible the first three waves and the reason you do that is because it gives you a bunch of advantages that are going to allow you to get a better first base over your opponent so it gives you a creep advantage which is good for trading because your creeps are going to do more damage than theirs it's going to give you a level advantage you know level two versus level one level three versus level two which at times you can abuse it and it also gives you plenty of opportunities to harass your opponent when they go for creeps so again this is very useful in winning matchups because obviously you can harass them more it's good in even matchups because it's it can be the difference between you know who's actually winning or losing is just who's hitting level two and level three first uh, it's not so good in losing matchups and I'll, I'll show an example of that soon but you can see here as the sound of Akali basically I'm just slow pushing it in I'm building these this creep wave up as, as much as I can and that's giving me lots of opportunities to to harass basically and then when it goes under tower I've made sure that I've placed a war in in order to harass her under tower without fear of getting ganked and then I just punish her as much as possible so this is a really easy way to get ahead of your opponent and it's going to go a super long way to securing that better first base this example here is a more even matchup so whoever gets pushed is generally Really going to win out and this one's in my road to rank one playlist if you do want to go and watch the game but you can see we're both really trying to prioritize push on the wave because whoever gets it is going to have an edge in trade so over time i managed to slowly get the push and that's going to mean that i'm able to harass her pretty heavily if we kind of skip to this time it's in a really easy you know place for me to harass now you're not always going to be out of three wave crash especially if your opponent is you know thinning the wave out and stuff like that but you can see once again i'm in that position where i'm able to abuse level advantages i'm able to harass my opponent under tower and this goes a long way again towards securing that bit of first base in matchups that you lose you probably want to let the wave come to you that's because by pushing out the wave it's going to give your opponent too many opportunities to trade on you so it can be difficult to secure the better first base in these lanes and ideally you're just going to focus on csing better than them and trying to trade defensively so you can see here again Against Tristana I'm mostly just like farming on, on my side of the lane not giving her the opportunity to jump on you so obviously this is all matchup specific but the general rules as I said are winning or even lanes you want to push um, losing lanes you kind of want on your side if you're not sure I'd recommend just going to YouTube type in the matchup and literally just watch the first five minutes like I don't care about anything else just type in say Azir versus Tristana watch the first five minutes and just get a plan for what you're going to do on your first three waves this brings me to the last point then which is securing that better base than your opponent so ideally through your kind of laning skill through your early game rooms through your wave control you will force your opponent to recall first because they're low on hp this is going to allow you to kill an extra wave obviously it's an even better if you have more cs than your opponent because you're going to have even more gold so you can see here that the oriana based in tp right i will now do the same i've got a whole extra wave have more gold this means that i come back with a huge gold advantage so i buy tier 2 sorks my opponent has tear and boots, right? So at this point, she's going to get absolutely annihilated because I just do more damage. This is what you're looking for. This is the whole point of your first through your first four or five minutes is to make sure that you base with more gold than your opponent, that you're stronger and that you can now extend this lead further by trading on them harder and harder. Our third section is the rest of the early game. So they're kind of five to 14 minute period. Once again, there's three things to focus on. The first of which is finding a way to snowball. So good ways to snowball, there's roaming, plates, solo kills or skirmishes those are the main things you're looking for and it'll differ game to game so in this example here even though i was playing azir a champ that doesn't normally roam i saw that the enemy bot lane was very low and i could come down and i ended up killing the nidalee as well so this is kind of something that you have to look at game to game like if your opponent's playing too safe maybe you're looking for roams or skirmishes maybe if you can keep forcing your opponent into basing you can take their plates or something right in this example here i'm playing jace versus syndra so i can chunk her out pretty consistently i'm kind of destroying her in lane if i can force her to base like this continually i can take her plates in the 1v1 and with this I can then once again base with more gold than she does so I have the better base I can continue to leverage that or I could use you know it for something else 
in this example here, I'm playing Oriana. I've already got quite ahead over the Zoe, and so I've been taking her plates, but I can extend that even more if I can find the solo kill on her here. So I'm, I know that I'm much stronger, like I have Mythic and she doesn't. Um, so I'm kind of like peppering under the tower, doing what I can. Um, and then ultimately, when she walks up a bit too far, I just go for the kill, right? I'm just leveraging that huge level advantage. I have gold advantage. I have basically everything over here, here um, and just get the kill. So these are ways you can snowball. Um, the last one, and especially if you're playing, you know, assassin champs or champs that just like to fight, is getting involved in as many skirmishes as possible. Because you know that you're kind of strong in this, right? Like so champs like Akali, Pantheon, um, again, most assassins, you're not particularly good in isolated 1v1, um, unless they're like really overextended, but you really thrive in these sorts of fights you're really just looking for some way to snowball the game further in your favor beyond just having high cs that's not to say that having high cs isn't important in fact it's really really critical that you're not giving up waves to free and there's two rules that you can use to help you with this so the first one is that in probably 99 percent of cases you want to make sure you push out the mid wave before you roam or use your priority for anything so you can see here my main focus is first to get this wave crashed before i'm leaving the lane essentially the second rule that you can use is that whatever you're doing with your priority unless you're fully committing to a play like you're diving another lane or something you normally want to be back on the wave by the time the waves are crashing so you can see here i use this priority to come and place some wards but then i make sure that i'm back on the wave when it's meeting this makes sure that one you're not losing the wave but also that you're not giving up free priority to your opponent and it just leaves you continually in control of the early game the last thing to think about for the early game is similar to the pre-first base, just making sure you have a really good vision set up. And normally the way to do this is to come back to lane, push out the wave, and then enter river and try place a pink and one yellow ward. So you can see here, I come push, I then enter the river, I pink the river, and I move my yellow ward further up. This is going to reduce a lot of deaths. And this is very important because deaths, again, in this first 15 minutes are very punishing because it means that you lose plates, you know, you lose farm, um, stuff like that. And it snowballs really, really hard. Your main goal coming out of early game should be to have basically high cs a couple kp and as few deaths as possible that's going to go a really long way to just having a super consistent early game and honestly i don't mind too much if you die 10 times post 15 minutes as long as you keep your pre-15 deaths relatively low you'll be in a good spot section four is the mid game and the mid game is still reasonably important but it's nowhere near as important as the early game and if you have a bad early game you're going to find the mid game very very hard um, but if you have a good early game the mid game is going to be a lot easier so the basic premise and the things to remember for the mid game is that basically you're trying to keep your as strong as possible you know getting as much gold and xp as you can while still being at as many crucial fights as you can which will normally be dragons so for keeping yourself strong you know getting a lot of gold and xp you kind of need to push the side lane out as far as you can safely and a lot of that will just depend on how much vision you have so in this example here right i don't have a lot of vision as the ori um but i do have my talia next to me so i feel comfortable shoving it a little bit um but once my talia dies i end up backing off right because now i can no longer push this wave safely if we come to another example here, um, I'm playing Azir, I'm extremely fed, and my team is stomping, right? So in this case, I have nothing to be scared of. So pushing as far as I can safely or as far as I can without dying looks very different in this situation. I'm not stuck with pushing the wave only halfway. I'm able to actually push the wave, you know, very, very far. I'm able to just siege this tower because there's nothing that can hit me, right? It's also a bit easier because I have a bit more mobility, so it, it's easier to get out. But this is basically what you're looking at. In this final example here, right, I'm playing Zoe, which is a champ that is not particularly good on side lane, and the enemy team has a Talia. So I actually just clear this wave, and then I pretty much am just ready to start walking down. Now, in this clip, we end up picking the Talia and, and getting the kills. So at this point, I would probably go back top. But those are kind of three different examples of how far out you can push. Another thing to factor in is if you have TP or not. So obviously, if you're playing a champ with Ignite, you have to be a bit more careful going on side lane. And a rule I like to use is think of it as TP is giving you permission to side lane. It's often oftentimes the case that your team will fight despite you not being there and if you have tp you're able to get there right if you're playing one of these champs that has tp or if you have tp up if you're side laning with ignite or if you're side laning with tp down you have to be aware of the fact that your team might fight without you and if they do well i guess if you want to be at the team fight you push the wave and then walk to the team fight or try and trade as much gold as you can on the other side of the map so you can take plates or you can take towers you can take camps do whatever you can essentially to make that fight still worth it for you gold wise the other key focus for the mid game is as i said before to be at all those crucial fights and generally the crucial fights are just the barons and dragons and the good thing about this is that the dragons are very predictable right they spawn every five minutes and there's pretty much always a fight on them every time so the way i like to think about the mid game is kind of in this five minute cycle right there's like the dragon spawning and fighting it 
it. And then you spend the next four minutes basically getting stronger for the next dragon. In the one minute before dragon spawns, you want to basically base, spend all your gold, be as strong as possible, and then go to drag. So in this situation here, dragon is spawning in about a minute, right? So I want to base, I want to spend everything I can, I want to be as strong as possible. So you can either walk straight to dragon and kind of set up your vision around it, you know, be there super early, or you can come push out a wave and then rotate to dragon. It doesn't really matter too much as long as you're at dragon on time. So here about 30 seconds away, I'm around mid, I'm ready to fight, I'm full HP, I've spent all my gold. Basically, I can't get any stronger here. And I see all the time in your guys' games where you're, you know, sitting on the map with say 2,000 gold when Baron's, when, when Dragon's spawning, or maybe you're just in base when Dragon's spawning, or you're not in position at the right time, right? So this is very, very important. Again, just think of mid game in that five minute cycle, spend that four minutes getting as much gold, getting as much XP as you possibly can. And then a minute before drag, basically reset, try and cash it all in and then get to that dragon fight because you know there's gonna be a fight there every time. Make sure you're there, win that fight. And then eventually you're gonna win the game through that. So our last section is team fighting. And a lot of the game is just spent kind of setting up for this, right? You're getting stronger and stronger, trying to get as much gold and as much snowball as you can to make sure you are as strong as possible for those inevitable, you know, dragon and baron fights. But if you play the team fights really badly, you're going to have to be getting you know, super, super fed out of early game to make up for it. So if you do have good team fighting skill, it's going to go a long way. And I think there's just a few things to focus on that will help you a lot. So the first one is your champion identity. Like, what are you actually meant to do as your champ? Are you meant to kind of play front to back? Are you meant to, you know, peel for your team? Are you meant to kill squishies? Do you need a flank or something like that? Pretty much just think about what what is my champion actually meant to do? And I, you'd be surprised how many people don't have a clue or aren't playing towards what their champ is actually meant to do. The second thing is target priority. So you want to kind of try, or at least the way I do it, is I just generally try and number my enemies from one to five or so, right? So I might be thinking like, okay, Soraka in this clip is the most important target and I want to kill her first. Um, and maybe Renekton's like the least important target, so I don't care about him too much. Now, a lot of the time, it doesn't matter too much, you know, what order they're actually in, right? Like, do you need to correctly number them one to five? I would say probably not, but it's basically just important that you're not hitting, say, target number five, like the least important Renekton, over maybe target number one, the most important Soraka, right? So you're just trying to make sure that you have um, something in your mind, some kind of way of, of knowing like which targets actually matter essentially. And then the last thing to keep in mind is just are there any key abilities or threats that you need to be careful of? Like maybe you need to wait till your opponents use something before you go in or maybe you need to be careful of something like Blitzcrank Hook before you can engage. Just try and plan out as much of the team fight as you can before it starts. You know, think about who what you're meant to do. Think about who your targets are. Think about what abilities you need to avoid or keep track of. This goes a really long way and honestly without too much investment you get a pretty good amount of reward. It's important to remember that sometimes what you do after the fight is just as important as the fight itself so after you win a fight before resetting you want to take as much gold as you can basically you want to push waves all the way in you want to take whatever camps are available you want to take towers or objectives pretty much just vacuum up as much of the map as you can and it's really really important that if you do this and you stay on the map a while that you still get a reset in before you fight again, right? You don't want to stay on the map so long and with so much gold that you end up fighting again because otherwise it doesn't really matter, right? All the gold is just sitting in your inventory. So here we want to fight, you know, we pushed as far as we could, we took some camps, we took this dragon, but importantly after, when the enemy team tried to contest us, they tried to TP in on us, we just run, right? We do not want the fight, we have not reset yet. I have 1250 gold, I don't know how much my teammates have, but it's probably more, so we just run away from this and make sure that we get our reset off before we look to fight again. So honestly, I think that's pretty much it i guess to make it really clear for you guys and to summarize it for you what i think i owe my high win rate to is i know how to get that initial lead through the pre-game and through my early game play i can get that initial snowball and then from there i pretty much just stay strong throughout the mid game i team fight well and i'm at the crucial team fights i think that's pretty much it you know that's like my simple game plan now obviously there is some nuance to that and remember if you want to go look at these games the road to rank one has most of them and with my thoughts explained so that can kind of take you to the next step but obviously Obviously, even with knowing all these things, like, are you going to win every game? No, like, I won lots of games. I also lost games where I played well, and I won games where I played bad, right? So there's naturally a bit of luck involved in it. But I think if you're very consistently, you know, coming out of that early game strong, you're picking, you know, your champs in the right situations, and you team fight well, you are just naturally going to win a lot of games. And I think you would be surprised how many games are winnable. So that's going to be it for this video. And I do have tons of other educational content on my channel. So if you want to check out any of my fundamental or champion guides, please go have a 
a look at that. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. I answer pretty much everything. So whatever it is, you know, whether it's questions about League of Legends, questions about your love life, I'll answer them. Other than all that, the road to rank one obviously isn't done. I'm pretty happy with the challenger win rate, but we'll see what win rate we end up getting to rank one with. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.